Hello, beautiful Gemini, and welcome to September. This is a month full of healing, connection, reflection, slow down, nourishing in, devotion. And it's also a month where the clouds lift a little bit and our ability to perceive and truly understand what is coming about starts to come full circle a little bit. There's a little bit of that full circle energy. You know, when you think about what was happening the equinox six months ago in March to the equinox here in September, it's a big arc of energy. I think we can all agree about that. And I love equinox time, which happens every March and September because this is that time equilibrium of rebalancing, of harmony, of shift, and I really love it for that. And for you all, there's a lot of energy here focusing in on healing, connection, and remembering who you truly are on this path. You know, there can be a lot coming at you, a lot of information, a lot of new identities, a lot of new ways of doing things in the world, and you can almost feel as though who am I within that process, right? There's just so much happening. There can almost be a numbness that comes about with a huge amount of growth and change. And I feel like September gives Gemini a chance to incorporate some of that growth so that you can figure out who you are now within this huge growth period, within this huge change in energy and life. Uh, let's talk about why some of these themes came up for me as your message throughout this month of September. Uh, the moon cycle is really powerful for you all. It's hitting into the full moon in Pisces, which is your 10th house of what you're doing in the world, who you are in the world, how you expand and move through the world, and a new moon in Virgo on the 17th, which is all going to be all about what who you are on the inside, who you are on the hidden. Um, and these two, they're fellow mutable signs. They're really about healing. They're really about healing the dynamic between these two aspects of ourselves. So you're getting a huge hit of energy there. The other thing I love about this month, for you specifically, Gemini, is that both Jupiter and Saturn are going direct in Capricorn. Now, if you're a Gemini rising especially, Jupiter and Saturn have been working through your eighth house of transformation, and they've been doing some retrograde action for several months. This month, they're starting to move forward. And as that happens, we are getting prepped here in September for these planets to move out of Capricorn and into Aquarius at the end of the year. And this is their final, you know, as they move forward, you're going to be starting to see those full circle moments start to show up more and more as this month progresses, where it may have felt like you opened up a loop and you're running through it and you don't know how it's ever going to make sense. This month may give you some of that clarity. The final message I want to send to you all about September, before we get into the cards here as they're falling, Queen of Wands, love it. The final thing I want to say is there's a big ticket item in September that a lot of people are going to be talking about, which is Mars retrograde. And it is a big retrograde. Mars in Aries retrograde hasn't happened for a long time. It's pretty rare. And Mars rules Aries, it's at home, it's Aries. And for you, oh, another card fell, Nine of Wands. <laughs> Always a good indicator of some healing going on there when we get Nine of Wands. Mars retrograde is a time to incorporate our masculine. At the most basic level, you know, Mars energy is all about how we push forward in life, how we get things done, you know, our sex drive, all these kind of empowering things, right? But it does need time to reset. And so every couple of years, we work with the Mars retrograde. This one specifically is going to be dealing with how we feel we have to take action in order to be valuable, worthy, how much we feel we have to be in control to feel valuable and worthy, and to challenge all of that. Now, this is happening, Page of Wands. We're getting all the fire for Gemini this month, which I think is really interesting. Um, there's something going on with a creative spark here, even within all this healing. Now, Mars retrograde is going to be happening in your community, in your friendships. And I think actually, another card fell, nine of pentacles. And I think actually 
this is a great month to get deeper, more connected with those people that are close to you in your life and to get clarity on any friendships or any relationships that you feel need a little bit more guidance, support, presence, what have you, and Seven of Pentacles. Let's call it there. Okay, so there's, there's a lot working with you this month, Gems. There really is. Most of it is supportive of you. And like I said, there's a theme for Gemini's this month around things coming full circle, things being understood, and being able to nurture into your next phase. Because like I said, with that amount of expansion and growth that's happened over the last six months between these equinoxes, it can feel overwhelming, almost numbing to come into uh to come into it all, to understand it all, to be in it, right? It can feel like it's just so much. It's like if you're eating a giant platter of desserts, at some point you're going to get so used, to, you're going to get so used to that sugar content, the intensity of it, that you won't even be able to tell, am I eating dessert anymore? That's sometimes how it can feel to grow really rapidly and really intensely over a short period of time. And I get that sense. And September gives you a chance to incorporate it all, a chance to understand it all, and a chance to start working with it in ways that feel a little empowering. If you feel as though your confidence has been a little shaken by the amount of growth, or that your sense of equilibrium and center point has been shaken because of the growth, this is a wonderful month for Geminis to get back into a groove with your confidence and with how you're creating and moving through the world. So let's talk through these cards. I mean, you want to talk about getting your groove back. Queen of Wands right out of the gate wanted to come out here. She just flew out of my deck today. And you know that Queen of Wands is here to tell us something really good. Now, she is a timing queen. Right, She is very tied to the cat and to Leonine energy, which has everything to do with using your energy wisely. It's not about spreading yourself thin. It's not about doing everything on the list. It's about sitting still, watching, paying attention, and moving really quickly and clearly on the things that matter. And in many ways, I think Mars Retrograde teaches us that lesson over and over again. You know, where maybe normally we have our, all of our engines revved, we're ready to get in there, go, 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 go. Mars Retrograde reminds us that it's okay to be selective with our energy. It's okay to just pick those one or two things that we really want to focus on. And that it's also okay for there to be times of observation, listening, rest, and that those are not just passive acts. They're actually very active parts of the process. And so Queen of Wands really embodies that. You know, there's a, there's a, False dualism around masculine feminine sometimes, which puts everything in either this passive camp or this active camp. And sometimes there is a crossover between the two. Sitting still and listening and devoting some time to hearing your soul's voice. Um, a lot of times we talk about that as surrender or as an act of being passive and receiving from the divine source. And while that's one part of it, it's also an active, engaged choice that we make. And so it's not just about floating around and flopping around. And I think Queen of Wands really represents that. Now, one of the things, remember how I said, the moon this month, the new and the full moon, are going to be activating healing around your external persona and your internal persona, or your like internal, sensitive, sacred self. A lot of healing there. And Nine of Wands, also Mars retrograde coming up here where you feel you have to have armor on, where you feel like you have to have the perfect story, where you feel you have to put a mask on in order to be accepted, understood, where you need, feel you need to put armor on. This is all going to be coming up if you're taking the time to listen in. Now, this is a really good thing because once again, like I said, September for you all is going to be a chance to incorporate, to understand, to feel as though you can close out some old loops and to feel as though you can catch up with yourself a little bit. Catch up with the amount of growth. Be a little bit more present in where you are now and how the world has changed. And when that happens, and when we take the time to do that work, Nine of Wands likes to come up at this time, right? Nine of Wands loves to come up because this is the part of ourselves that feels like we are still in a battle from the past. Whether that be 
wiring from a story you got when you were really young to something that happened last year that you haven't quite felt safe coming out of yet. The Nine of Wands has us sit there and look at where we're still girding ourselves, where we still have our spiky shoulder pads on to keep ourselves safe and asks us to take a breath and let it go. You know, nine is a culminating energy as well. So it's the closeout of a long cycle. Now in the context of all of this, there are some new seeds as well. And I think this month is really interesting for you. I think on the surface, you may look at this month when it's over and say, what really happened here? Did anything really happen here? Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I can't even tell. But what was really going on there is you're catching up with your growth, you're finding your new equilibrium, you're releasing some of the armor and the shackles that you have on you, and you're planting some really soft, subtle, creative seeds that are going to carry you forward. And once again, as Jupiter and Saturn move direct, we are setting up, we have, like at this point, we can count it as weeks before we are done with Saturn and Capricorn, before we are done with Jupiter and Capricorn. And it's not that those transits are bad or negative and we need to rush through them. It does mean though, that any learning cycles you've had over the last couple of years are closing out. We're opening up a new cycle very soon. So this is an important time. September is a very important time to get in alignment with where it is you're going. You know, you want to get your compass going. You want to sit still long enough to let the compass calibrate and then to go, right? Because the other part of this puzzle is in the richness of these things right here, these last three cards. Page of Wands, Nine of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles. Page of Wands is a new spark. Something new is opening up at this time. I think the equinox is one of the most magical times of the year. We have two every year. And I think they're not enjoyed enough. We're always obsessed with the solstice and other times of year, but I think the equinoxes are some of the most magical doorways we can work with. They really can tap us into what is right for us and help us direct our course in a way that makes sense. And the Page of Wands for me is representing that. And of course, as the sun moves into Libra season on the 22nd, along with the equinox, this is going to be in such good flow with you. This is going to be a time of opening your heart to what's next. Page of Wands is all about being a beginner and getting in there and trying it and seeing what happens, splashing around in the colors of life. And there is something new opening up for you. Now, it's something that you are going to be tending to for a while, right? This is something that you are going to be nurturing into existence, taking your time doing, and it's the beginning of that process. So like I said, I had that little moment there a couple minutes ago where I said you might look at September and be like ready for September to be the month that you're in high speed action or you have everything sorted out. And September may feel kind of low key in some ways. And you might be thinking, what have I really done with this month? Do not underestimate the quiet energy undergirding your process this month, Gemini, because it's really important stuff. It's actually huge. The thing is that that doesn't always equate to the way culturally we set up to-do lists and accomplishment lists and trophies and gold stars. When we're energetically doing this kind of closeout opening up, this deep understanding, this deep uh, energy work that actually does tend to boomerang into our lives in very real physical form, it doesn't translate immediately to a beautiful, tidy checklist. So we often judge it as a non-productive time, as a time where very little has gone on, when in fact it's kind of the crucial bones of the mechanism at work here. So keep that in mind, and I love this energy for you because it is healing, because it is confidence boosting, because it is nurturing, and because it is here to help you feel like you can continue to grow and move forward and not like you're just burning out from the amount of growth. With every growth, there's a little contraction and growth and contraction. We need those grounding points to help us keep growing. Now I have, <clears throat> excuse me, a little invocation for you all for this September that I would love to share with you uh, for the equinox, for this shift in season, for this shift in energy and light that does occur every September, and also to invoke 
the power and the healing of the Mars retrograde in Aries. So here is my invocation to you all. May I allow love to encompass and pour out from me. May I welcome in a joyful, playful, transformative process. May I trust my mutable talents. May I allow myself to land softly on decisions and paths that are right for me. This invocation really focuses on, yes, transformation, yes, calibration, yes, choosing paths, but doing it in a way that feels light and kind and joyful and nourishing and not just jarring to the soul. I also want you all to remember to trust in that mutable energy that you carry with you. You are mutable air, which means that one of your great gifts in this life is your ability to transition and shift and try things and play. And what an amazing gift that is. And you're allowed to trust in that part of yourself that is actually able to make a shift and make a change and curious about the shifts and change. That's all good. Final note, this is also a time though where it's okay to choose things to devote to, to choose things that you wanna start opening your heart up to. Once again, September is a sneak preview. We're just beginning to really tap into 2021 energy, to December energy, to energy that's going to be directing us for several years ahead. Um, several years ahead. So we're closing out one cycle, we're opening up another, and we're getting adjusted at this time. So this is a really important month for that. Take your time, listen in. I'm going to be going deep on Mars retrograde and obviously everything else that's happening in September and forward over on Patreon. It's an amazing little community. I would love to see you guys over there. For those of you who have joined me, you know what I'm talking about. Amazing community. I'd love to see you there. You can find me on my Instagram and my website. I'll leave all of those links below. And of course, as always, I'm wearing Pink Loon's gorgeous jewelry. She's always got something new and beautiful that she is working with. So I'll leave her link below as well. And we'll see you all so soon for October readings and moon magics and all the discussions ahead. I love you so much.